Hi everyone, welcome to the podcast. Today I'm joined with Kanishka and we'll be discussing whether a disease-free society is a possibility in the future. A very topical and interesting discussion, so make sure you guys listen carefully. Um, Ashish, I'm just wondering what exactly is a disease-free society by definition and what does it entail? So at its simplest, a disease-free society is a society in which we are all immune to major diseases. And when I say all, I mean all of us, regardless of what race, background we come from, what socioeconomic factors are in place, we are all immune from all major diseases. And I think one of the key ways we can get to this is hygiene. Yeah, for sure. So hygiene is, of course, extremely important in preventing spread of disease across the world. Uh, in order to even hope to achieve a disease-free world, it will be of utmost importance to make sure we all are aware of and practice good hygiene. So if we look to recent events with COVID-19, for example, hygiene is something that has played a major part in preventing the spread. So washing your hands for 20 seconds, wearing a mask, gloves, uh, all of that stuff. Um, When we're exposed to bacterial infections and bacteria in general and germs, it's vital we wash our hands, clean ourselves uh, of whatever we may have contacted. And it isn't necessarily about wearing gloves and a mask, but more personal hygiene. So um, simply things like washing your hands prior to ingesting food, Uh, And quite a shocking fact I found was two to 10 million bacteria can live on your fingertips. uh, And all of these can be transferred upon the food you ingest. And the germs that you take onto your hands can last for up to three hours. So if you were playing outside, for example, before you came in for dinner, um, and you you may think that just because you've waited a little, the germs are going to have gone away, but it, it lasts for three hours, meaning you would still need to wash your hands no matter how long ago you thought it was. Um, and a single illness ca- uh, causing um, germ can multiply up to 8 million times in a 24-hour period. So clearly, by not washing your hands and getting rid of germs as, as soon as they are, you're increasing the likelihood of them spreading. Uh, simple things such as showering um, once a day or twice a day uh, are almost necessary to achieve a disease-free world. Um, washing your hands after going to the toilet uh, brushing your teeth once in the morning and uh, and once in the evening go a long way to preventing disease spread. Uh, washing your clothes as regularly as often um, and preventing germs and bacteria from lingering on the surf- surfaces of your clothes. Uh, washing them at higher temperatures and leaving them out to dry in the sun um, are all essential. Uh, if you're taking it further, you know, covering your nose and mouth when um, going outside, but especially when um, sneezing or coughing is is incredibly essential. So again, if we look to COVID, um, the amount of emphasis on covering your um, face when sneezing and coughing, because so many germs can be spread that way. Uh, Freeing ourselves of microbes is essentially what's key as microbes are much as as hygiene and freeing ourselves of microbes and germs and bacteria is what's key for enabling a disease-free society. Um, What about medication though so obviously hygiene is really important but how does medication affect the disease free society Uh, um, obviously medication is key in removing certain diseases that we have but it's also one of the factors that will decrease our ability to reach that i think the main thing comes down to antibiotic resistance so if you don't know antibiotics are medicines which are used to treat used to prevent and treat bacterial infections and antibiotic resistance occurs when bacteria change in response to the use of these medicines. So bacteria, uh, are not humans or animals, become antibiotic resistant. These bacteria may infect humans and animals and the infections they cause are harder to treat than, than those that are caused by non-resistant bacteria. So this automatically will lead to higher medical costs, prolonged hospital stays and increased mortality. And therefore I think the entire world would need to change the way it prescribes and uses antibiotics in every country if you want to reach a disease-free society. So even with if new medicines are developed which kill these antibiotic-resistant uh, bacteria, the antibiotic-resistant mm-hmm. bacteria can always adapt. And that's why without behaviour mm-hmm. change, antibiotic resistance will remain a major threat. And behaviour changes, as you mentioned earlier on, includes uh, vaccination, hand washing and good food hygiene. And I think mm-hmm. those are the three main factors that we should really be uh, focusing on. And I think overall, when we do talk about a disease-free society, we would also need to see what the time frame is, because after reading about antibiotic resistance and a lack of hygiene in some third world countries, what do you think is the time scale for having a disease-free society in general? Um, I think, unfortunately, you do have to 
differentiate into uh, LED season um, the average or least economically developed countries and your most economically developed countries. Uh, and the timescales on those two will be completely different. So a disease-free society can be in either one, but disease-free as the world will be a lot longer. So LEDCs often have overcrowded living with little to no emphasis on personal hygiene um, and little access to medication required to achieve it. So obviously, like you said, you don't want to overprescribe medication, but you do need basic medication to enable it. Um, mm, yeah. And for this reason, I feel like it would take a lot longer to see LEDCs becoming truly disease-free. Uh, and we may never really see this happen, um, or at least definitely not in our lifetime. Uh, we discussed uh, immortality before and saying that that could be a possibility for the super wealthy and the super rich by 2050 or 2060, but for the poorest countries in the world, um, that could not happen until maybe um, the year 3000. I, I, I feel as though a similar thing will happen with a disease-free society. I don't think it will happen to, until perhaps the end of this millennium, unfortunately. Um, I think for it to be a realistic scientific possibility, it would fall more to other nations to have to heavily invest in the countries and invest in the education of the inhabitants um, to teach them about good hygiene uh, and give them access to medication and clean water and things like that. Um, but for uh, the, the wealthier countries, I think it's really based on the societies themselves, which is it sounds kind of like a cop out, but um, I think it's based on how willing people are to take on uh, levels of good hygiene. So theoretically, with the medication we have, we could see it by um, you know 2050, um, perhaps a bit later than that. But it's really based on how willing people are to um, you know do all the hygiene based things I mentioned earlier uh, and really invest in the idea of a disease free society. But I think a realistic aim would be. Uh, 2050 or 2060 if I'm honest um, but I think it's Im important that we don't um, kind of think it's going to happen too soon either so uh, medication needs to obviously evolve a little we need to get rid of some of the biggest uh, threats we face today which we've mentioned in other podcasts so go and listen to those but um, we also need to like I said educate everyone equally on good hygiene um, yeah. but one thing is Although it sounds like an amazing idea, surely there are some negatives to go with. The yeah, muscle. in fact, you'd be surprised. There's actually two big negatives. And one of them is disease control is a natural way of population control. And without having diseases, we're essentially having a problem of overpopulation. And the way that this would affect the world is that we would have too many people, too little resources, and the sustainability would is already very low and this would decrease further causing us to have a, a worldwide panic in fact and another thing is the fact that the disease free would be only available for people who have a natural disease i.e something like Huntington's mm. disease where you have a long gradual onset of dementia and we can use CRISPR Cas9 editing which we talked about in the first podcast and we can remove this disease uh, using uh, CRISPR Cas9 and then we would raise the question about whether we should use this for autism, Asperger's, for other spectrum diseases, mm. but they won't necessarily uh, come under a natural disease. And therefore, we would come under the case that the government would be left to decide which disease is allowed and which disease isn't, which yeah. would be massive, massive ethical objections and uh, widespread uh, moral obligations as well. Uh, so that's why. Sorry. Um, I was thinking as well, uh, would it not also affect kind of that chain of evolution so obviously um if we are disease free it doesn't really enable the same chance for us to mutate positively uh in the sense that we mm -hmm. won't and, and that's what's also been written here and that uh people with asperges um some may know that have certain traits that i express um and make them very good at music for example or, or very clever and this could be taken away from them if we risk mm using gene editing and yeah. that's one part that we're not too sure and would raise massive ethical obligations because if you end up editing something that you shouldn't have um then we could end up with a big problem and yeah see, for we sure. don't know everything about gene editing we shouldn't uh use it on humans until we're 100 percent sure about what it does and what its capabilities and what we're trying to actually do i think it is also a case of how far should we go um but i think it's also important to remember a lot of the 
huge positives that do come with it. So yeah. you're talking about um, if it works after a sustained period of time, a uh, decreased need for medication, uh, increased lifespans for people, um, the socioeconomic impacts could be potentially huge. Uh, you're looking at what, what would be most likely a far more equal society in the sense that across the world, um, there'd be a greater level of equality. Uh, and I think those are all huge positives. You're also um, looking at with longevity increasing, you're looking at potentially increasing for what people may do in that time. And I think it would, I think it would change the world, but it's important to also um, bring to the fore the negatives that do come with it, like you mentioned. Yeah, I think overall, um, a disease-free society, I think it's quite a far-fetched uh, topic, actually. And in hindsight, it's probably better if we focus on um, the long- trying to increase our lifespan and the longevity of our life and the quality of life that we're living, which uh, we mentioned in another podcast is somewhere close to the number 2050. So overall, it would be prudent to imagine this would happen in our lifetime, but we could always make big striding steps towards it especially mm. in the case of third world countries with more emphasis on personal hygiene and more support in terms of providing them with basic medication that they need. So, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I think that was a really good summary. And I also just wanted to mention um, quickly that um, there is also an extent to which we don't know what new diseases may come around in the next few years. And then that could halt these plans completely. Um, but yeah, as you said, quite a far-fetched topic, but an in- interesting one nonetheless. Um, I hope everyone listening enjoyed. Thank you for listening. Uh, make sure to join us um, next Wednesday for another interesting podcast. And subscribe, like this video. If you have any specific topics you'd like us to discuss, leave them in the Google Forms, which the link will be in the distri- description. Follow our Twitter handle. And yeah, tune in next week. Thank you, guys. Cheers, guys.